Merry meet everybody, it's Cagney Eno Fierre here. Today's video is my witchy uh, coming out closet, or coming out of the room closet, I should say. Um, so anyway, this video, I don't know if I've ever did a video on this in on my channel. I know I did it on the witch's mm -hmm. voice, now the voice of witches. Um, I don't know if I did that or not, but I'm going to do it anyway. I feel like talking, I feel like sharing. So here goes. So, in, shit, I can't even talk right now. I was 15, about to turn 16, it was two months before my 16th birthday that I discovered a book called Gothcraft. I, um, like I said, I was into the gothic subculture. I was wearing black a lot, black lipstick, eyeshadow, or what I did was just smacked on a shit ton of eyeliner, looked like raccoon, but... Trust me, my makeup skills have gotten a lot better now. But, God, I even tried wearing white foundation or white powder when I was a teenager. I just put on literally just powder. Like, it, it, I didn't know anything about makeup or anything like that. I just literally smacked white powder all over my face. It just looked like a hot ass mess. It looked like I had coke all over my face. But, anyways, back to the story. So. <sighs> Sorry about that. My allergies are acting up really bad. It's kind of hard to breathe out of my nose, so it's the only way I can clear it. Um, I discovered the book Gothcraft. I thought it was just like goth, like arts and crafts stuff. I, that's what I literally thought it was, like an idiot. So I picked up the book. Started reading it. It showed like different types of goths, like the history of the goth culture, um, different types of music, all this good stuff. As I got into the book more, it started talking about witchcraft. I was like, witchcraft? Huh? This is kind of back when I still kind of thought it was evil because it was embedded in my head that witchcraft is bad, no, no. Um, and then I kept reading and I like started getting interested into it. Even particularly, it was talking about Wicca in one part of the book. So I decided to go back to the library because the library was my second home when I was a teenager. And I started reading, picking up books on Wicca specifically. Hiding this from everybody, of course, because I don't want no one thinking I was into some crazy shit. And I kept reading the books more and more, and it seemed like to me. <sighs> Hold on, I felt like I was gonna sneeze. Hold on. Alright, sorry about that. I had to go below my nose so quick because it was getting bad. Okay, anyway, I went the story. So I picked up the books about Wicca, got more into it, started studying it more. Uh, my dumbass didn't do the whole year and a day thing, which you're supposed to do, because I was impatient, so I went and did a self-dedication right in less than a month and a half, less than a month. Which, I know it's against, like, against Wiccan protocol or Wiccan rules, but I did it anyway, because I really felt connected to it. My self-dedication right that I did, it felt so empowering I felt so connected to the earth like the earth was pulsating I had animals the way the house that I lived on on the east side was all these duplexes it was like a what the hell do you call it it's cul-de-sac kind of thing and there was a forest two different forests there was one right next to my house and there's one on the other side of the neighborhood the there was no fence either so the forest, we had animals coming up by our house all the time. We even had deers running into the door sometimes, or running into the house. So, there were animals coming out of the forest while I was doing this, like, sitting around. I'm like, what the hell? This is like some Snow White shit. I was freaking out a little bit. I was kind of scared, to be honest. But then it kind of like, you know, this is kind of cool. I liked it. I liked that feeling. I felt comforted and safe. And then after that, I continued to practice rituals in private, with, mostly outside. That was the joy that I had about the east side, so I can go do my rituals outside. I didn't really have any tools back then. Um, the thing I had were like these little tea light candles and these little votive candles, and I would just go outside in the forest, which was like amazing, and do my rituals outside in the forest. Uh, even though it was dangerous to do it outside at night. Because that area was dangerous. What I mean by that, there was a lot of um, drug busts and a lot of uh, gang activity in that neighborhood. But I still did my rituals anyway, because 
I don't give a fuck. And then getting on to how I came out as a witch. I didn't tell fucking nobody. The only person I told was my brother. And he was like, what? What? He didn't understand it. He's like, well, whatever you want to do. He doesn't really care. And when I was living with my grandparents, I had to stop doing rituals in their house. I wasn't allowed to. I didn't tell them yet. And I know they would freak the hell out if I practiced anything. So I hid all my stuff. Um, I hid all of it. And then one time when we were at my girl Parker's house visiting my girl Parker, I decided to tell my mom that I'm a witch. And she looked at me funny and she's like, what the hell do you mean a witch? And I explained to her what Wicca was and everything like that. And she said, it's fine, just don't sacrifice cats. So I even asked her to sit down and watch me do a ritual and cast a spell. And she was like, okay, that's pretty cool. My mom now comes to me for tarot readings, and she comes to me for spells and crystal work uh, to help with her fibromyalgia pains. And she said it actually does help. It specifically, amethyst really helps her with her fibro pain so much. It doesn't get rid of it completely, but she says it dulls it down to where it's bearable for her. I have to keep buying her new amethyst crystals, though, because she keeps losing her necklaces. But anyway, so that's how I came out to my mom. And my dad was like, eh, it's cool. He didn't care either. So, and then the rest of the family, I just announced it on face no, not Facebook, it was MySpace back then. God, that was old. I announced it on MySpace that I practice Wicca and witchcraft, and a lot of my friends and family were very supportive of it. Um, the only ones who weren't supportive of it were my Grandma Boom, and my Grandpa Boom made his soul rest in peace. They sat down. God, they sat down, had an open Bible, because they found a book that I left in my dresser when I lived there. My grandma said she found it by accident. I'm like, no, you went through my dresser drawer. Because it was her house, she felt that she's allowed to do that. So she found the book. They both sat me down, opened up the Bible, and started preaching to me for about an hour or two about how it's wrong what's wrong with me, blah blah blah, I need to see the light of Jesus Christ, all this other crap. I'm not saying the religion's crap, I'm just saying that I don't, I'm, I don't believe in it. I don't believe in Christianity. So, after they did that, I asked my grandparents to let me sit down and explain what Wicca is. They let me explain it the whole time I was explaining this, they just kept saying no, wrong, wrong, evil, it's wrong, it's evil. I was like, just, I give up. So I had to hide all my witchcraft items. I would practice it either at my aunt's house or I'd go to a friend's house and practice it or go to the park and meditate, which I had a lot of people give me weird looks. But I, I'd still do it. I would do what I had to do. I had absolutely no ritual tools for about six or seven months. I went without tools. So I know how to do my witchcraft without tools. But it feels nice to have tools. So that's pretty much it, um, besides me just fucking ranting on and on, like an idiot. Let's get, uh, that's pretty much it. So, until next time, Mary Park, let's be.